Hey guys, and welcome to the ATPL theory. We're going to be talking about takeoff and landing distances and declared distances. So these terms you'll have seen in your exams, in your daily lives. Now, I see them a lot on every chart that I look at every time I land and take off. They stand for landing distance available, takeoff distance available, takeoff run available, and accelerate stop distance available. These should not be confused with the landing distance, takeoff distance, takeoff run, and accelerate stop distance, which should of course be lower once we do our performance calculations, than what is available with the A at the end. If our takeoff distance is going to be larger than the takeoff distance available, of course we can't take off, etc. I've drawn this, I think this is the easiest way to understand it. I'll just quickly go through what I've drawn here. We have a runway with our threshold markings. We have a displaced threshold on one side. We have two stopways and we have a clear way on one side. Now the stopways can only be used in an emergency situation to stop the aircraft. They cannot be used for the takeoff roll calculations or the landing distance calculations. The clearway, on the other hand, that can be used for the takeoff distance calculations if it's there. Now, a lot of runways nowadays don't really have stopways. A lot of them have clearways, of course, because they, they make sure there's, a, there's an area clear after the runway. So let's go through them. Landing, first of all, that's the straightforward one. If we are landing on the easterly runway in this case, we cannot land before the threshold because it's a displaced threshold. It means that part of the runway is not suitable for us impacting on it on our landing. Maybe impacting with a strong word. So the landing distance available would be from that threshold, from that displaced threshold to the end of the runway, not including the stopway. That would be the landing distance available. Landing on a westerly direction, we can use that the part after the displaced threshold as part of our landing distance calculations. Our landing distance available here would actually go past the threshold on the opposite runway and we can use that extra little bit there. We cannot use the stopway as part of our landing distance calculations. Now next is going to be the takeoff run which is the amount of asphalt we will use before we lift off and take off. If we're in an easterly direction of course we can use the full runway. That is beyond the displaced threshold until the end of the runway, not including the stopway again. So that would be our takeoff run available. Of course, our takeoff run would have to be calculated to be less than that. On this runway, it would be exactly the same. Takeoff run available would be from the threshold of the runway to the end of the runway. That is all the asphalt we've got to use. We cannot use the stopways for this again. So it's the stopway is an emergency situation, bit of asphalt only. It's not really designed to carry the weight of an aircraft. However, it can be used in an emergency situation as a little extra bit of asphalt to run into with an aircraft as you're doing an aborted takeoff. So the accelerate stop distance available, that's when you accelerate up to a maximum of V1, of course, and by V1 you have to have initiated the braking and you brake that distance that you calculate from your performance, of course, would have to be less than the accelerate stop distance available. If we're going on an easterly runway, we have the runway all the way to the end of the stopway. So that is our ASDA. And on a westerly runway, it's exactly the same. The full runway, including the stopway. Finally, the takeoff distance available. This includes the takeoff run, plus that first little bit of climb out. There has to be a clear way available if we want to use any more than the runway for that calculation. On a westerly runway here, we're quite restricted because there's no clear way. So the only section we have for our takeoff distance is the actual runway. So that is our takeoff distance available total. So we would have to have our takeoff roll and our initial climb out within that runway. So it's quite restrictive there. However, if we have a clear way, which a lot of airports do, we can put our TODA in here, and that would actually be our takeoff run, plus we get an extra little bit there, so we're less performance restricted. On the topic of takeoffs, the way we can get around a lot of these is by the use of flaps. As you'll know, with a clean flap configuration, or with, a, with less flap settings, we will have a longer takeoff roll, but a steeper climb out, because we will have less drag. If we're performance limited with the length of the runway, we can use a higher flap setting, and if we've got a clear way or something afterwards, we can use a higher flap setting to make sure that the takeoff roll is less because we can actually take off on the runway. And then the initial climb out can be a shallower one, but we have a clear way. So these are all the type of things to take into consideration. So, TODA, ASDA, TORA, and LDA. 
I hope that's cleared it up a little bit for you guys. All the best, and until next time.